Okay, what is up, everybody? I am here with all the VV legends, man. I got Lewis Morgan, who needs no introduction, Sub 100 Master. I've got Sean, who's here from Comics and Crypto, who's one of the big pillars in our community. I've got a new untitled legend that's coming up, Danny BR, man, who is the unofficial flip master, the king of that. Trust me, this guy knows how to make, you know, 4K to 100K quickly. And then I got my brother, who's back in action. Uh, who left the channel for five months, didn't believe in me, didn't believe in it anymore. And now oh, he's... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come out the woodwork. <laughs> he's come back for all that YouTube revenue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he saw Lewis come on the channel and he's like, wait a second. He's like, no, yeah. this is pretty serious now. <laughs> Let me get in. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> So how was the drop today for everybody? Terrible. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. <laughs> <Completely>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I only got the common, but uh, I know my the main pirate up there got uh, a nice little flip. Curse, why don't you tell him about that, man? Yeah, well, it was pretty funny. At first, I actually didn't get anything. I, I had two accounts going. I didn't get one drop, and everybody else in my family got one. So I was pretty upset about that. So I actually went up to go take a, a little bath, you know, and soak in my sorrows. And sure enough, number 45 common came up for 2K and I bought it and then flipped it for 3.5K. So Sick, man. I got I got pretty lucky. That's Crazy. good. That's awesome. yeah. I didn't get anything today, but I was also waiting to see, again, I was, it, it doesn't really, when I look at the Xmas drops, it kind of puts me off a little bit, having the Christmas stuff all over them. It kind of ruins the NFT for me, but well, potentially, might be able to strip them, so which is pretty cool. I've seen a lot of people posting it all over Twitter too. So and on Reddit, Reddit's quite good too because I'm seeing a load of little tips that are going on. Um, my friend actually messaged me earlier and he said, um, he said again, this is from Reddit. He said this. He said, uh, wonder if it's a glitch with the layering and the coat globe. But I've been seeing these rumors on Reddit before today's drop, and you can zoom in under the Deadpool hat and his costume is there. I think it's something, and he said something about the house as well. So I don't know if that's just a glitch or that just happens anyway. Interesting. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we saw that with the snow globe, wasn't it? Where you could, people were zooming in and you could also make this, the hat and the, all the jumpers disappear. I mean, awesome if you can. I think that's better because, like you say, I'm the same. I prefer, prefer the NFT clean, not the actual character, especially with the first appearance, you know? You'd want mm -hmm. it to be without, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it almost puts it in that category where it's like mm -hmm. a niche. Right, every every December it will become popular again, but the night the, the eleven months leading up to it, no one gives a shit. You know, <laughs> yeah, literally. the winter flip. But it's a nice little yeah. Christmas gift. You can get a Christmas uh, flip every year. That's it. Yeah, awesome. Just buy it in August <laughs> before, and then by the time December comes around, you've made 20, 30 percent on it. <laughs> yeah. Can we? Can we see the... The... Sorry, carry on. Carry on. I, I can definitely see the common being in, like the clothing being interoperable. You can probably add accessories on there and. But the, the ultra rare and cigarette rare, right? Those are specifically animated towards the Christmas holidays or the the, the holidays. So it's mm. yeah. But the common, I think the common and the uh, and the uncommon and the rare are going to be interoperable with with accessories. I think it's pretty possible for sure. Yeah, it doesn't get rid of the sword though, does it? On the on the rare, do you notice that? The Again, it's, 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 accessory could be accessory though. Accessory change, mm. very yeah. possible. Yeah. Hmm. What would he hold then? If you took the sword away, then what would he hold though? I don't know. Another sword. Another, another sword. <laughs> 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 a bigger, a bigger sword. sword. <laughs> yeah. a bigger, sword. <laughs> a bigger sword. What do you prefer? Do you prefer? I know, obviously, you know, you got your secret rares, but do you prefer the common over the secret rare? Obviously, the common's usually better, or the secret rare is more limited. So, what, what do you prefer? Especially low mint voice. Chat, let you answer, mate. <laughs> That's to anyone. What, what do you prefer? Lower <laughs> mint common or lower mint secret so, rare? It was interesting because David, you, when we did that interview with him, he said that rarity was key because he just, it's almost like a safeguard. But I think it depends on the item. Like if I look at like a comic, right? And I see that it has the original cover. I feel like that resonates with more people. So mm. I, I would personally want like a low mint common because I just feel as though like if you've grown up seeing those comics your whole life, you might just want to have that rather than this secret rare variant that nobody's seen. But then with the secret rare variant, you know, you'll, you're, it's limited to 600 editions, sometimes 250. So it just creates that exclusivity. Um, so I don't know. That's how I feel about it. But I'm not sure what you guys think. Oh, I completely agree with that. Because you think with the, 
like with the common, like I said, they make it the most popular. Um, it always seems now that trend's happening where it just takes off straight away. People are just, they've clocked on that it's going to be the best, even if it isn't. They just buy the shit out of it every single time and it just flies. And then inevitably in about an hour or two, people lose interest and it starts dumping again. So it's, it's just, it's happening with every single common, um, which I don't think obviously is the case. People are getting the wrong idea. It's meant to be like the significant ones that actually mean something. Uh, people are sort of just buying or like they would do if they didn't understand it. You know, you just buy what 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 kept doing the best so yeah that's going to be a really good debate like what's what's more valuable a low low common um uh, like a really low common or a high high minted secret rare and that's going to be yeah. an awesome debate uh moving forward but i think we'll, we'll be able to know for sure once we be able to track past sales that's when we're really going to know okay yeah. what's, where's the where's the where does the value lie like would you rather have a 501 uh common marvel comics number one or like a super high minted secret rare of marvel comics one that's Absolutely. a really good debate. Um, but I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. But I think ultimately it's really going to come down to personal preference. You know, yeah. it's, it's the same in the comic book world, physical comic books and the graded comics. You know, some people hate signed covers, but some yeah. people pay ex- a high premium for them. So it really just comes, kind of comes down to the, uh, the individual and the preference and the collecting and investing. So, but I think they're both going to crush it. I don't. I think there's enough space for both of them just to, to not only succeed but just thrive. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be fun. What is that? What's the best way to value a comic in terms of obviously I know you've got what you uh, it's not is it PS I'm not sure if, is it PSA? Is uh, well CG, CGC right, is, so one CG... of the top, is the top dog for comics yeah. Right. So say you got a CGC I don't know nine point eight or a ten obviously you know that is a ten whereas obviously the digital comic book is it just the lower mint is better with comic books or how is the mint valued based on that? So for example, right. if there's a a thirty thousand total mint collection for a comic book let's say it's being dropped tomorrow. The top two percent would be the six hundred mint number and below. So that would be equivalent to a nine point eight grade, according to our scale. So what's really exciting to me is, like for example, if you look at Fantastic Four number five, right? There's only the highest grade in existence on the CGC census is a nine point six grade, and there's only three. There's only three copies in existence. So we may never even see an actual sale of one of those copies. Because whoever owns them probably doesn't, probably doesn't need the money. They just want to own one of the three highest grades in existence. Um, but here's the interesting question, right? So according to our, our, our analysis here, if, an, if, a, if you say you have a, a number 241 secret rare of Mar- uh, Fantastic Four number five, that would be equivalent to a 9.9 grade. Now, if that's, if that's true, that, could, that means that, this, that, that NFT is worth more than the actual physical counterpart, and that's that's the debate I'm excited to see, and I'm excited to see where where this comes to if this comes to fruition. But man, I mean, this, <laughs> I mean, oh. and that just to give you an idea of value, a nine, one of those nine point six graded books as of right now, according to GoCollect, is estimated to sell for about a half a million dollars. But I'm beyond confident if any of those go on the market tomorrow, they would sell for over a million dollars, easily wow. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I consider that it's a grail book, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, that's why I'm so high in these NFTs. I mean, I, I think it's very possible a lot of these could be worth more, purely because we're not going to see a lot of the sales on the physical side, like Marvel Comics number one. And there's only 63 copies, physical copies in existence on the CGC census. 63, guys, that's crazy. The last sale that happened was a 2.0 grade, which mm. is incredibly low grade, and it was a purple label. So that meant, that meant there's restoration which devalues the book, but it still sold for $150,000. And this was back wow. in September. Okay. Yeah. So the highest grade in existence of Marvel Comics 1 is a 9.4. And if that's sold tomorrow, I mean, I, I think it would probably go for $5 million, probably easily. And the, given the popularity that this book is getting on Vivi, it's, over time, it's only become more popular. And, and t- what I'm really excited to see is when physical comic books are able, you're able to buy with crypto. Yeah. That's when, that's when that's when it's gonna go. It's gonna get crazy. That's mm. when it's gonna get crazy for sure. Um, but I think both sides of the market are complementing each other really well. Um, it's gonna be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially Marvel Comics one. What, what do you think about the secret rare? Obviously, in terms of obviously you've got the common, like we say, with that grade. If it's like the lower mint, obviously we have. I think the mints are mixed up, aren't they? Between all the rarities, is that mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So if all the mints yeah. are like that, how would you put the secret rare? in relation to a common um, and, or an uncommon and that, how would you rank it like that? 
I think that's really going to, going to depend on tracking past sales. So we'll know the value of where these lie. Because right now it's it's kind of, well, there's a lot of question marks. We see what's, we were, our only reference really right now is what's for sale in the market. Like what's the floor price around that number? But that doesn't mean things are selling at that price. So we don't really know for sure if things are selling at that price. But once we're able to have the information, now that we're on Immutable X, this, a lot of this information, all the information is going to be public. So we'll be able, there will be websites dedicated to tracking past sales. So we'll have this information. Um, but and that's what I love about actually what VB did with this because creating one lot of all the comic books and all the rarities in one lump number, it means it's brilliant because now the commons could be worth as much as the ultra rares, if not secret rares, purely based on the low mint numbers. And that wouldn't that's not really possible on any of the, the any of the other collectibles. So man, that's a really, a really great move. At first, when that first happened, I thought to myself, wait, this doesn't make any sense. And then it hit me. Man, with bolts of lightning, I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. This makes total sense. And it's it's going to uh, really add value to the entire collection across so the board. I've got a question for you, Sean, because I like I love the um, you know, the theoretical aspect of this and how you guys have actually come up with a grading scale. And and so my question is is like, let's say I'm really interested in a Marvel number one secret rare, and all of a sudden I see a 47965 mint show up. Right. And right below that is a, let's just say a 1700 mint. How much influence should those mints have? So for instance, if I buy into a low, like a high mint Marvel one, and it's like, let's say the floor is 37 K by getting a 1700 mint over time, would that mean like a hundred thousand dollar difference? Or is that more just like a premium or do you know what I'm trying to say? Because that's mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. Like I would, I would be so upset. Let's just say if I bought into like a high mint, and you're like, "Well, that's only a 0.5 grade," and the guy after me is like <laughs> 9.3, <laughs> and his is worth like you know 10x, kind of what mine is. Yeah. So I think that's to yeah. me what's interesting because at those higher price points, people are almost just like happy to have one rather than it to be like. Yeah. But but maybe it's because there's not enough big money in it yet, where you can start seeing more and more distinctions between those two. Do you know what I mean? I'm just curious yeah, to totally. what you think on, on that. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be tears, especially for um, these mint numbers. You know, the, like you mentioned, like a, a 1,500 compared to like a, what was like a 45,000 mint number. I and mean, that's a pretty significant difference. So I think at the end of the day, the, the collectors are always going to want to differentiate value. I mean, they did that with a CGC grading scale. And that's why that's a, it's just a perfect reference because you have a comic book that's given a number it, they all have it, it, the exact same covers, um, but the only thing that differentiates each comic is the number. I mean, when you look at a graded comic, you look at the cover and then you look at the number and then you base the value off, off that number. And that's why I know that comic collectors are going to adopt this philosophy really well, really well. Very cool. And it's gonna so, be interesting to see over time, which one, how you can make an objective analysis. For instance, you know, it's better to get a low mint common than a high minted secret rare, right? So I think that eventually we'll know that. Sorry, Lewis, if I, I know you're going to ask. I was going to say, yeah, how does, how does that just someone, so how does that work then? If you're saying it, the lower the mint, the better in the 0.5%, but obviously with secret rares and stuff, they're completely random as to the actual uh, mint number, right? So how does that work with, say, like a secret rare? Because obviously there could be really high mints, but there's not very many of them. Yeah, so I, I think you just look at the categories, right? So you'll have, you'll have each categories of rarities and then you'll have this, maybe this structure right here, like we created for the mint number system for each each rarity, right? So that's mm -hmm. how you separate each each comic. Um, so obviously the, the, like this incredibly low mint secret rares will sell for a premium. Like those will be the top dogs, I, I'm in my opinion. So especially is, like, if, like I mentioned, yeah. I was just say, is, well, is there a way based on what you're saying of us seeing how, what, what, comics were minted in e in each category will that show on immutable well I, I think i'm pretty sure that dan mentioned that these numbers are they're they're sequential right they're done in order these mint yeah, numbers so it was my understanding okay. that they were minted sequentially but i know that there's been some people that are like looking into the blockchain now to confirm that but that was the understanding so let's say yeah. that uh the secret is right they released 600 of each uh, in one Marvel comic, will there be 600 of the same numbers as the other Marvel comics? Do you know what I mean? Like, let's say there's like, I don't know, 22,222 is one of them. Would that maybe in the next release not be a secret? It's random each time, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it is. They, they yeah, randomize it every single time. Well, 
Mm. Yeah, so yeah, yeah one, be different. it would be, I mean, to me, Sean, I'll ask you this, is is the com- as the common is obviously the um, the original comic book cover. Um, do you think, obviously, that obviously uh, Vivi have added these rarities in themselves. Do you think that the commons, uh, like a number one or a 501, in time would overtake a, a low mint secret rare? Or do you think just because of the scarcity that Vivi has applied themselves, that would give that value in the long term? Or because it's actually mimicking the actual cover, that's where the value is going to be? I think low mint commons are always going to crush it. I've, I've been, I've had that feeling since the beginning that there might, there's probably going to be collectors out there that are going to appreciate the original covers more. Mm. Um, I, I do think though the secret rares, the low mint secret rares will always be key. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Really based on the scarcity. I mean, look at like Marvel comics one. I mean, that, that cover is, is considered a grail piece now and yeah. it's only going to become mm. more valuable over time for sure. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. I, I checked out your I checked out your link tree and uh, I come across obviously that VB comic ranking that you're talking about. And obviously you've got Captain oh, cool. America Comics One, right? Is that coming out on VB? Because that's not out at the moment, is it? Uh, oh, okay. So that ranking list is at the new tab on the right. Um, I was talking to Chad and a few guys about this. And those, so these are my top eleven physical comic book from mm-hmm. Marvel. Yeah, right. yeah. So these are like my, my the biggest grail pieces. Um, in my opinion, that I think there's about four or five of them out there right now, but there's still a lot more to come. Because purely because oh. I was thinking of Fantastic Four number five, like people are asking me, well, where does that rank in your physical ra- physical rankings? And I'm like, huh, I actually don't even think I have a physical rankings. <laughs> <laughs> so I threw so, this one together real quick, but yeah. So Captain America Comics one is is something we need to look out for because that on your physical oh, ranking yeah. is a similar a similar cost in well estimated value seven million, right? Which is yeah. similar to the Marvel Comics one. Yeah, yeah, that came out in 1941, I believe. And the cover is Captain America punching Hitler in the face. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's less than 200 copies in existence on the CGC census. Jeez. Less than 200 copies, yeah. And it's an awesome cover, man. It's so rad. Uh, it's actually, it was under the, the umbrella Timely Comics, same as Marvel Comics number one. This was the name of the company before Marvel Comics. So these are the two biggest comics that came under ti- under Timely, which eventually became Marvel Comics in 1961, with the first issue of Fantastic Four number one. Man, Sean knows so much about comics. <laughs> we had a, like a webinar or something with Sean. No, this is- so Sean, this is another question I have that I know, like you know, uh, right now we're looking at these comics, right, and we're saying, okay, could these hit, you know, real world comic book value, right, the physical part of it. And not only that, could they potentially surpass it? And I know there's some people that think, you know what, no way could it ever hit the same worth as a real comic book that's worth, let's say, 1.7 million in real life because there's physical degradation. It's so much more scarce. Um, You know, they are obviously subject to wear and tear still and they're harder to find and all these different things. And then other people will say, no, guess what? Like the reason why these, these NFTs are going to go surpass their original physical value is because they're immortalized in time. They can be read without breaking down. And so, you know, I, I'm just, and then the other thing I want us to consider too, is that like Vivi's just starting. We're going to have hundreds, if not thousands yeah. of more brands coming in here. We already have 3 million NFTs. We'll probably have 300 million NFTs, meaning are we really thinking that one in every 10 people in the world are going to own a Vivi NFT? So like, these are the kind of things that I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts on because I, I have a feeling that, that, I don't know if they're going to be capped eventually. I think they'll still grow, but you did that great breakdown showing the digital and the physical and which one is worth more. And Avengers 8, as an yeah. example, already outdid its physical counterpart, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, <clears throat> that really took me by surprise. It's, it's already passed its market cap. The, the digital market cap's already passed, passed the physical. You know, I think this whole process, this is an exciting time because as, as you know, it's all new, right? So we're still figuring this out. I'm, there's, I'm gonna be wrong about a lot of things. I'm gonna be right about a lot of things. But um, I do think that this is the first time these NFTs, you can actually literally look at the physical counterpart and say, okay, there's something, so there's a, this is a good reference. This is a really good reference. Um, there are comics that I do think that will be worth a lot more long-term potentially. I mean, look at like Ultimate Fallout number four, just based on the popularity of Miles Morales. 
I think it's in, in the easily, how easily accessible these NFTs are, which is something I'll come back to later. But that's why I think these NFTs are going to absolutely crush it. Because comic books, you know, you buy it off a market, you got to do shipping. It's not easy to ship worldwide. These NFTs are instantaneous. You can buy them and anyone can buy them around the world instantly. And it's going to be very easily accessible for everybody. Um, but yeah, I, 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 so there's a lot to the question, Chad. <laughs> Man, I, you know me, I just get running off and I, I just because I think about this every day. I think everybody's yeah. <laughs> you like me and I forget that everybody else has a life. So yeah, no, this is good. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I do think ultimately uh, it's going to come down to the big comics. Those are the comics that collectors are going to come hard after, the collectors, when they adopt this space. And they will adopt this space. It's going to take time. They're stubborn as hell. But <laughs> I'm still trying to convene a, a few of my uh, my uh, mentors into it. They're 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 slowly but sure. They understand it, but it's, it's going to take time. But they'll get it. They'll get it eventually, like right. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's great. You know, another thing I was thinking about today, and I was like, you know, I don't know if you guys all saw Andre's new video um, when he he put VV as the number his number two platform in the world oh, right cool. now. Andre Jeek, his number two platform as, uh, and he did a thing about Spider Man. And I'm like thinking to myself, you know, here we are with Lewis on this channel right now. And I'm like, the power of influence, I think, goes a long way, right? And, uh, you know, you, people see Lewis starting to do sub 100 collecting and a lot of people are, are interested now. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but the sub 100 market is getting a little bit tighter yeah. now. Like oh, it's yeah. a lot difficult, <laughs> more difficult to snatch something <laughs> at, a, at a reasonable price. Like now it's like I'm looking at an entry to C3PO at like 13K and I'm like, well, I'm not going to be doing that. So, you know, I think about the power of influence and like how that shifts the market and like how low mints were never really a thing. Like when we start, if you look at like other platforms like Terra Virtua and those, like low mints are kind of a piece of the puzzle, but not like on BV. So do you guys think that like this low mint hunting is going to be something that stands the test of time? Danny? Well, mate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think, I mean, Chad, you know, obviously me and Lewis started off when we first started talking. He was the first thing he said to me is like, what do I collect? And I was like, you got to go sub 100. You have to get you have to get all of these because back then they were they were all just sitting there. And obviously, Chad, after speaking to you, we were all seeing constantly that these were going to be that little niche that we thought was always going to do the best. You know, and uh, every single time. If you've been in another NFT project, everyone talks about exclusivity. And if you've been on one on like OpenSea or anything like that, they have different rarities and they rank them between how many of they how many of the attributes they've got. On Vivi, we don't have that. Obviously, we've got the IP, but we don't have the um, the scarcity of of perhaps some of these lower lower running uh, NFT projects. But then, if you look into that, you've got like the little. Obviously, we think sub 100. There is our little niche there. You've got those low mints where you can only have sort of 60 public mints um of that one collectible that's obviously backed by this massive ip and in there lies your little niche you know um so i just think the value there is just massive like potentially in the future if you think obviously post malone or, or any other celebrity has got one of these bored apes um i can see in the future that they're going to want one of their characters that they grew up knowing well how can i be part of an exclusive club in within that within that um collectible and it's going to be sub 100 you know in my opinion mm -hmm. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> this, this is why it's good to have you on the channel, Danny. So let, let's talk about that a little more in depth, because I know that you came back. Well, you and I both sold off some yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. I had a wedding at the store and a house. You yeah, had other nice things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. Right, <laughs> And we all would have been sitting at. Oh yeah, we've been hundred k right now. <laughs> oh mate, easily. It makes me feel sick. Yeah, you know, it, it does. Um, literally, like the week before as well. It was like the week. It was like the week after. I'm sure I sold everything, and then it just everything like quadrupled for no reason. <laughs> well, good, like just take it. So silly. <laughs> Obviously, at the time it was probably relative, right? I mean, at the time. At the time it was relative. You're right. Yeah. But Danny, seeing your comeback, man, like I'd love to kind of, you know, chat about that a little more because you went again, like, you know, first of all, thanks for introducing me to Lewis to get things started. I mean, how cool was that, that, you know, you gave me that opportunity and then you and I've been chatting for four or five months before that. And so 
I'm curious, like, you know, once you started over, like, what was that process for you? Because I know you've got like a 74 Todd. I go, I know you've got a 57 Walt. I mean, these are, these are grail pieces, dude. Like these are big, big pieces. So, so like walk us through that a little bit, man. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you're more than welcome. I say all I did was talk to him on Twitter and I said, that he asked who was the best guy and I said it was you. So there you go. <laughs> um, <And> he's wrong. <laughs> yeah, mate, absolutely. Um, yeah, so like I said, I sold off most of my stuff. Um, from the beginning, I basically was playing like a balancing act between Omi and uh, Omi and the VV collectibles. Initially, I was like all in on Omi because my brother got me into it. Um, and I sort of, the first drop I did was Nightwing. Um, I didn't get it. He did. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, whatever. I'll try the next one. And then I saw in the Telegram, like this is my first introduction to it, that he was selling it for like 1.3K. I was like, how can you be selling that for 1.3? I couldn't understand it. I was like, I need to find out about this because I had like no money. I had nothing. I didn't have any money at all. I was like, all right, okay, well, I'm in. So um, after that, it just was like a balancing act, sort of collecting all the sets, become obsessed with it. And you sort of di start diving deeper into it all, you know? Um yeah, and then obviously over time you build up a collection and then I had to sell it all off for, for whatever reason, you know. Um, and then obviously, like we said, everything shot up um, and that was it. So I was like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck it now. So <laughs> basically that was it. I go back, um, start collecting again from scratch and I get lucky on a couple drops. Like you, I got, I think I got, while I was on holiday, I got lucky on the drop, uh, which was amazing. I got the ultra rare uh, Dragon Girl number 230 20 minutes after the actual like on the on the repeat you know on, on the actual drop i got that that was like 20 minutes past um and i remember just thinking what well, obi was going down and all these collectibles were going up i just saw this like opportunity of like Omi so cheap because obviously i've been following it for so long i just sold everything and put it all into Omi. i think when it was like 0 0.21 i was like there's no way this is going any lower than this um, and you know, after, after a couple of months, it, I was right, you know, it just, it went back up to 0 0.8 and I bought back all in the collectibles again. So I was like straight back in with that again. Um, and yeah, that, 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 that's pretty much it. I just kept doing that every time an opportunity would arise. I just kept doing that. I, I think it was more luck than judgment. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm some sort of like, <laughs> in what's that, going man. on with VV collectibles, but yeah, it was probably more luck than judgment. So um, the collectibles you had, you mostly put it back into Omi? Is yeah, I put it back into Omi and oh, then yeah. and then nice. obviously Omi went back up again and then the golden moments came out. And this was like the big thing, you know, and I saw Sean, I was watching your channel um, and 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 Chad as well. Um, and you guys were like so hyped on these things. And I was like, I had X amount of money, not, not a lot, like maybe twenty thousand dollars like that. I'd been that I'd flipped from the VV collectibles after collecting all the time. I was out of VV at this point before they announced that. And then obviously the uh yeah this this came about and i was like right these guys are all in i'm going all in and i i did i did i went all in on everything i, I converted all my money into gems uh and yeah i say after the conviction that you guys were, were, were showing in, in your videos and that was it i was just i just went for it and it, it paid off massively for me so yeah i was lucky again oh dude daddy goosebumps bud <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was life changing awesome, man, man. Oh, it was, it was incredible awesome. you still on the set I own all, yeah, I own, I, no, now wow. see now I'm all in on the collectibles they're all <laughs> I'm keeping them for, for good you know yeah. Yeah. I've uh, um, initially I wanted like a sub 1k I just wanted the set but that's all I wanted because I wasn't sure because when you guys were talking about the values and I was like how can these be anything less than a k floor each you know I was yeah. like there's no way they yeah. can be and they came out at like well Homer and Bart was coming out at sort of 75 dollars for the floor um and I was like wow. How can this be happening? And, and yeah, I was just yeah. buying everything because obviously I had all that capital in there. I just bought everything I could, sub 1K, and every single drop, obviously, because I had that capital, luckily, from, from what I'd, I'd gone in all in, I thought, yeah, I'm going in. I was trying to convince everyone in my group. I was like, you need to buy these things. They're going to go up. I know they are, but obviously yeah. no one listens, do they? <laughs> until, it, until it's too late. But yeah. Yeah. That's cool. awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know Ch Chad's really high on as hiding the statues as well and i'm just excited for the future of these things man i mean you know and chad and i've had conversations about this that these they want to make these statues the most valuable on the internet Absolutely. especially the walt and mickey statue i mean like man and, and the, the crazy thing is they have the ip to do it they have the resources to make that happen they just add a little utility for it and boom it's a 50k floor Absolutely. you know like it, anybody who owns a statue can go to disneyland free around the world anywhere anytime 
That's it. Yeah. It's done. Slides out. You can see it happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And the crazy thing is, they probably, I guarantee you, half the people who probably own it wouldn't even go. But <laughs> these <laughs> statues would sell for 50 to 100K minimum mm -hmm. easily. And it's only going to increase in value over time. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. And I also think they're going to airdrop something for people who own the entire set. I think yeah. it's going to happen too. And Chad, you, you feel the same way about that as well? Yeah, well, I mean, I'll be honest, Sean. I've been stealing a lot of your ideas because every time... <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. We've been bouncing off. We're bouncing off each other. We're every time we talk, each... Sean's like, yeah, free Disney Pass. I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're bouncing off each other. Yeah. yeah. But no, like, I mean, you know, I think the big thing here is that uh, everything on DV is so undermined, in my opinion, currently, in terms of what people are, are putting value on. Like, how do you think the first Disney NFTs with Walt and Mickey Mouse, like some of the most influential figures of all time in human history, aren't going to do well long term. Like, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, right? And these things like we talked about are going to live forever. And so, you know, on that note, I think for me personally, Mickey and Walt is my favorite NFT that I, that I own currently. I, I love Secret Rare Spider-Man too, but I just, I don't know, something about Mickey and Walt is just the entire embodiment of Disney to me. So Special. on that note, what's your guys' favorite NFTs, man? I, I don't even know if I've asked this question before. Lewis, I'll let you answer that one. Later. I'm with you, to be fair. I mean, my fa it's hard to pick a favorite. They're all so cool, right? I mean, I'm being greedy now. <laughs> um, <laughs> partner, partner statue for sure, because the partner statue is exactly what got me to the app. And as the, the second I saw it, I thought exactly what you just said, Chad. I thought there's no way this can't be worth something, especially when you've got Walt Disney holding Mickey's hand. I just thought it was just so awesome. So the first thing I bought was pretty much that straight away. The second I'll come on there, I didn't know how to buy gems and I was buying gems straight off the marketplace. I bought like 3K gems instantly and I bought a 140 Walt. Um, so, so yeah, I think it was 140 Walt straight away. And uh, no, actually I bought the Elsa first. Hello, I bought an Elsa first um, because Walt I bought for, I think it was like 8K gems at the time, but it was a 140 first thing. Second, sorry, second thing. First thing was the Elsa I bought and it was like 1,200 gems at the time. It was like a 300 ounce. And uh, yeah, that was that was my first introduction. But again, it took me a while to get that secret rest Spider-Man, which I also like, which, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Do you want people to I know, that low mint number, which was snapped off the market black. 47? 47, yeah. Right? Wow. And now the floor is almost as where you well, came well, from, that, right? Which well, I think you kept telling me to get it, didn't you, Danny? You kept saying, you need to buy it. Was, didn't you tell me? Yeah, I was like, I sent yeah, him yeah. voice notes. I was like, dude, I don't, he's like, oh, but yeah, it's, it's like the Spider Man. And it's like, they're all about the comments. Just, what's the deal? I said, mate, you need to buy this now. Please just buy this. <laughs> I was like, if you don't buy it, I'll sell everything and I'll buy it off you. Just buy it. So yeah, he ended up buying it, luckily. Yeah, yeah I got that. It paid off. So it was good. Yeah. So. I'd say those three, the golden moments, all the golden moments, to be fair. Like, I think all the, all the golden moments right now is a long term play are all cheap. Every single one of them. I think they're probably some of the best valued items for a long-term play on, on, on the app. If I was going to bet on anything, it would be the whole entire golden moment set. And I'd hold it for a lifetime. Right. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. For me. And I know you're also a big uh, sub-100 Rizzo collector. Uh, so somehow, been, somehow I, I managed to accumulate five Rizzos. I didn't even, I didn't even want five <laughs> Rizzos. I wanted just one. And somehow we kept getting off the deals, didn't we, Danny? It was yeah. deal after deal after deal. And Danny was like, you've got to buy it, you've got to buy it. So I ended up with five <laughs> Rizzos. And then I sold Danny and said, right, I don't want five Rizzos. I want to sell them. So I've got an offer for the, some of the Rizzos, which was a really good offer, way above what I paid for them. And then as soon as Danny spent all day getting me the offer, I said, no, nah, I don't want to sell them. <laughs> the guy was fuming with me literally all day. He like they, they they pretty much the whole group chats blocked me. None of them talk to me anymore. <laughs> all my credibility's gone. I think he's a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> They're like you don't have shit. You don't even have them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I, just before you jumped in, Danny, I was saying like the relationship, especially how me and you met, was pretty funny. Like I just straight away said I've joined and put it out on Twitter, and those people kept messaging me, and obviously you were one of the guys, and. Usually you have a little bit of a, a back and forth with someone and then you kind of, you know, it just fizzles out. But then me and you, we, 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 I was on the phone to you within about five minutes. And then, and then 30 grand was in his account. <laughs> 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 because I couldn't, I, I was banned on all crypto platforms. I couldn't transfer money and I was so keen. I could see, I could see where everything was going. And I was so keen to get involved. I thought, yeah, Danny's a nice person. Danny, what's your details? 30 grand and he was in his account. <laughs> 
Are you trying to imagine how ridiculous that is to someone? You know what I mean? That's ridiculous money. I'd only known him an hour, and he'd put that into my bank account. Not even like that was just in there. I could have deleted it. I hadn't even seen him at this point. He didn't know who I was. And he just he just did that. And I was like, right, sweet, we're in. I was just excited to be able to buy whatever I wanted. You know, it was like um, a collector's sort of wet dream. I was like, right, I'm fucking going in. I'm getting whatever I want. <laughs> I don't care what happens. I'm just going for it. Um, yeah, it was it was surreal. And like you try and talk to I was trying to tell my friend, my friend Ryan actually said like Lewis has tweeted about it. Um and I was like, what, tweet about what? He said, what, Vivi? I was like, no way. So I obviously messaged him and seen that he'd had a Walt. And obviously I had the 57 Walt at this point. So I was like, right, he's got 140. I'm going to one-up him. There you go. And then I messaged him <laughs> that. Um, and then he's, yeah, that, that, that was basically how it started. So, yeah, it's crazy. And we were just basically, the whole week, he kept, he kept calling me on the way to work, on my lunch break, on the way home, just saying, what have you got? What have you got? So I was like, just constantly buying all week it was it was it was amazing you know it was we had, we had some seven hour phone calls remember we kept getting yeah. kicked so when you have a phone call long enough your phone actually turn like almost turns up and kicks you off the call as if to say all right you must have fell asleep on the phone because you've been on the phone so long so it kicks you off the call and it kept happening didn't it? we kept getting kicked off calls yeah like and every, then, every night every single night so then i ended up buying an 80 volt and then one popped up in auction the 53 volt but i i had only been on the app a day and to go on the auction, you need to be on the app for three days. Do you remember? So mm -hmm. I couldn't bid on the auction. Yeah. So I sent Danny the gems and he was on the auction for me. And then he was on YouTube and he was um, looking how to beat people at the auction. Obviously, you get a few seconds and you can kind of like push people out. So he was sticking in the bid and he got it perfect, really, because you bet. I mean, you bought it for, what, 17500 was it? And I think someone put like 17100 no, it was yeah, it was seventeen two fifty. We ended up winning it. Oh, I've got the I've got the print screen, but I'll, um, yeah, and the, the the bid before that was seventeen thousand. And the guy who lost to us was actually the guy who ended up selling us the Todds, the Rizzos, everything in one go. So that was how he started talking to us. So it was it was oh. weird, but yeah, yeah, because he couldn't even get the gems into the app. Uh, well, not he couldn't get the uh the auction. He wasn't even allowed. His account wasn't old enough to even buy anything. So once we saw that, we were like, right, we need to get this. And we actually won the we won the fifth no before we won the fifty three wasn't it we bought the eighty just in case as like a as like yeah, a buffer yeah. we were like right okay and that was seventeen thousand gems which you look at it now that's an incredible buy and seventeen thousand two fifty for a fifty three wall is unbelievable you know unbelievable. we kept doing it didn't we so I've accumulated a hell of a lot of things I've got duplicate under sub one hundred because it happens every time I will buy this and I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy this just in case and then a lower mint comes up so I buy that as well. And then I just can't bother to sell the other one. So I'll keep accumulating multiple sub 100s of the same thing. But that wasn't, that wasn't, um, that wasn't even my plan. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy to think that just in this room alone, I think there's eight waltz because I'm pretty sure Sean has four, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know you traded something for that too. I don't know if you wanted to discuss that story, but that was a cool story I as well. Yeah, I did. I, I actually, I, I, I traded a Spider-Man statue for two waltz. Yeah. My, my philosophy was it's always, I'm always, two waltz will always equal one Spider-Man Sigaro statue, just based on floor price. That was my assessment off that. Um, yeah. So, and also, <laughs> hopefully my mom's not seeing this. I, I'm gonna, giving a waltz to my mom for Christmas too. No so, way. <laughs> so no way. Gonna, gonna, have to, gonna have to show her this video after <laughs> Yeah. No that's idea. so cool no idea yeah but well, sean's mum, if you want to sell it i'll buy it half price <laughs> <laughs> she's a yeah. disney fan fanatic fanatic and really? uh and yeah yeah so she's i think she'll like that wow that's so cool and she's also in the vv man i go actually go over there almost every not every drop but most drops i'll go over there and uh and do it with them because they're so into it they love it yeah they're, they're no 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 luck though no. <laughs> no <luck at> all. <laughs> yeah. Well, so is it safe to say everybody's favorite NFT then is Walt and Mickey so far? Yeah, Carson. To be honest, you, man? Is I don't know, Chad. Me and you talk about this quite a bit, but like I like the old school yeah. shit, like the Rizzo and like the Becky, like the first set stuff. And even today, like I was looking at uh like Terry Dodson, and like for me and Chad, that's like one of the OG like collectibles back in the day, only seven hundred and fifty made. And I don't know those collectibles to me. 
it's just like the nostalgia behind them when we first got into this app like last year back in March the nostalgia is just like huge so for me like those old collectibles even prof bubbles stuff like that I like that more than Walt even though Walt and and the Secret Rare Spider-Mans and stuff will definitely be more expensive in the in the future but it's interesting that you say that because the one thing that I was talking to you about is like, if we do not have the type of interoperability that we think we're going to have when everything lives off, kind of like mm-hmm. OpenSea, if everyone can find into the VV app, right? And let's just say there's 10 million users. It would be such a flex to be like, look at my golden Moogly, which only has another 148 people in the world that hold it. That isn't VV. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like and if you're like doing YouTube or if you're doing something like social capital, that would be such a massive flex piece as like Walt and Mickey would still be a huge flex because still 4,333, but like it's, you know, very rare. You would see something so exclusive. So that's what we have the conversations about. Like, you know, would it be smarter just to buy things that are extremely scarce? But what we keep saying is that they're going to have more and more scarce things come out, hundred editions of this, 150 editions of this. And if it doesn't have a big IP, like you're only ever going to have one FA Mickey and Walt. You're only going to have one FA Spider-Man. It's just going to take a long time, I think, to get there. But that's kind of our thinking around it. You know? mm-hmm. That's the hard David, part too. David, like, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and to add to that, David, you said they're going to do one-on-ones. I've heard that as well. Or dance oh, yeah? that. So that, just, just to add to that, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. So. That's, that's good to know. So that would really threaten that scarcity, right? Yeah, exactly. So the things that yeah. we currently see now are like Donnie and Golden Moogly and... 250 edition comics, you know, that might be a regular thing, right? That's crazy. That is crazy. Well, that's the big thing too. Like me and you, me and Chad were talking about, like when we got on the app, it was still in beta stage. So all these collectibles that are going to release 150, 350 editions, all those were like test subjects. So I almost, I wonder if people are going to like be uh, in the future, be like, try to go back to the test collectibles, you know? So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm holding a prof just in case. But I'm not sure what's gonna what's gonna happen. Got, from when to be fair, when you first said it was under value, I still got mine from I think I paid two K for mine. Mm. Like when it was it's been, it's been 2k for like ever. It's like the only thing that's ever stayed at 2k. And then it went up to like seven and me and my brother, because we split it. Back then we used to just split collectibles. We used to like go halves on one because we like it was a shitload of money, you know. It's, we just used to think, well, there's only 450 of this. There's gonna be 10 million people on the app, we think then obviously this, the scarcity of this, because back then that was what it was. It was what was the most scarce because that we thought there's no way, same as you said, Chad, in a lot of your videos, that there's no way they're going to bring out collectibles that are less scarce than this. You know, why would they? Mm-hmm. That wasn't, everyone's going to complain. But obviously with the comics and stuff, they've gone a different route. Right. That well, then you know what? Sorry, go ahead, John. No, no, I was just going to say like, you know, add to what he says, just like that threw us for a loop because we didn't expect that, right, Cars? Yeah, well, the crazy part is too, like, these low mint collectibles, for example, Prof, I was looking at today, the floor price on these can be manipulated in like two seconds. Like there's only like 20 posted and they go from 1K to like 7K with like six or seven of them being bought, you know? So that goes to show you too, like if let's say a couple guys come in and buy them, the floor is already like, we saw what it was called, Chad. Uh, him. Him, yeah. Him went to 30K overnight. Obviously there's a bunch of paper hands guys that brought it back down to 11K. Yeah. But like that, that just goes to show you how, uh, how fast like these lower mint ones could move, you know. Mm. But people are paying that, you know, like they, they, they can manipulate as much as they want. But if it, if people that aren't willing to pay it, then it's not worth it, you know. They can they exactly can, like a Donny who's put. I mean, I I say controversial, but Donny to me, I don't get it. You know, I, I get that the fact that it's um, the most scarce collectible in VV and it's super iconic, and one day it may be worth that. But is there anyone actually in that space that's going to pay that? I I can't. I mean. Lewis is, is, you know what I mean, is a prime example. I know he wouldn't pay that. Exactly. I think I think the people that understand what you're saying won't pay it. If someone offered me a Donny for 70k, which is cheap for a Donny, if you look at the floor, if you look at the floor price on Vivi, still say no. If you said, do you want uh do you want to pay 50k for a I don't know, a partner statue or do you want a Donny? I'm gonna go for the partner statue all day. I don't I don't think you could give me a Donny, if I'm honest. I don't think long term it's gonna last at all. Back to what Chad says. They're going to make too many one-of-one fifties. You saw it with the secret rare skateboard. They, they randomly bought out another one just because of glitch. I think when they start to do a little, a few things like that, that you know, that kind of disregards the low, the the lower mint things with that are not backed with IP, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think the big thing too, is to look at like the way that I always value an NFT now in BB is I say, okay, if this was a one of one NFT, what would it sell for? So as an example, if it, Donnie was a one of one Powerpuff Girls thing, it would probably sell for the amount that it's actually listed at as 150 on, on OpenSea. Now, if I said, mm -hmm. look at Superman, first official licensed, you know, DC or whatever, and it's the first appearance of Superman in digital format, and let's say it's DC and it was a one of one, I bet you that'd sell for $8 million on OpenSea, right? Yeah. And so that's how I like to value it is like, okay, if it's a one of one, what would the worth of it? Like if Mickey and Walt one of one, you'd probably have somebody pay 20 million plus. Yeah. Right, yeah. and so then five hundred ETH. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, so th I think that's the like the way to break it down. I find it's easier because when I look at like Kozik rabbits as an example, I'm like I see some of his work being sold for like 15, 20 ETH for one of one. So I'm like, okay, is it really worth the value over eight hundred editions? Like that's just the way I look at it. But I could be I could be wrong, you know. I think uh, as well. I think that's we're basis, at, I think we're at a point in the app as well, where some of the collectibles, and I'm not going to say possibly which ones, just in case some guys out there hold them, are probably at peak price. And I think we're, you know, same with the stock market, you kind of sell speculation further down the line. The price is always overvalued now versus where it's going to be in two, three, four years on some things. And I feel like a lot of the things on here right now are at that stage. In my opinion, I think we're selling a lot of speculation down the line, especially with the whole NFT community. You've seen what board apes have done, you've seen what crypto punks have done, and I think that um, some of the some of the some of the things within the app are are at peak price. So I would always say as well, never be scared to take profit early because at the end of the day, if you make money from something you bought that's, that was six ninety nine or twenty dollars, and you can move it into other things, then unbelievable. There's um we saw it earlier right, when we were just looking at some of these these um. Snow glows, people are listing them straight away at 80k, 60k, and then not two minutes later, they're putting them down to 15k or 6k. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. when something's listed at a certain price, it's for sure not worth that. People are, are being a little bit greedy on the app and trying to take advantage of certain people. But again, the people with those top, the tops of gems aren't really going to be spending them on, on those things. I think that's a great point you make, uh, Lewis, about like you know, having a peak in a lot of these different things because. Or the ecosystem's getting bigger and bigger. Like now we've got even more Mickey stuff dropping tomorrow. And it's like, you know, I don't know what next week holds. Are we going to have Darth Vader? Like all these things are coming in. I started thinking today, man, Harry Potter, mm. Lord of the Rings. Like we haven't even seen anything yet. So everyone's just going to keep taking those gems out that they've made and flipping into the next yeah. thing. And unless we have <clears throat> mass amounts of users coming in to even out the amount of collectibles being dropped, like, you're right. There, there's going to be peaks for a lot of these things. And so I think, you know, it's a great point you make. People need to recognize that because I think everybody thinks that whatever they buy is just going to go to the moon. They're like, oh yeah, I'm getting this. This is going to go to hundred K. This is going to go to 50 K. And it's like, that's not how this works. Right. So I think that's really important. True. Yeah, I, saw, I saw some of those golden statues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine. I saw some of those golden statues drop a lot, you know, from, because the, the, the Coca-Cola drop today, I can imagine and tomorrow, I expect it probably be even worse. We're probably yeah. gonna see a big drop across the market tomorrow mm. because of the, the Steamboat Willie drop. But yeah, I mean, the grass isn't always green on the other side. I will say Steamboat Willie is a big deal for sure. But yeah, people need to, need to really take a step back and just really assess, is this really the better option? Is this the better move right now? Because it's not always the better, the better move. Yeah, yeah. People get with, with, it. with gems as well, it's so easy to get to get carried away and spend them. But obviously, oh, gem, yeah. it's like when you go on holiday to a foreign country, right? And you're like, five euros, no problem. <laughs> 10 euros, no problem. But that's like 10 pounds in your actual money. So these gems, obviously one gem is $1 or one pound. So you have to always think of it like that. But like 60 gems just sounds like playing money. But it's 60 pounds or $60. That's a lot. That's quite a lot. And I think if you could think of it as, as physical money, you'd probably make better decisions and and a great uh, and a great point from from Sean. I mean, if people come into the app, most people want IP. If someone's coming over from Harry Potter, you're going to get peaks and cycles. Every time something big drops, the price is probably going to go down initially, but after you're going to get a peak up because the guys that have joined, for example, this 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 um this um Steamboat Willie, people are going to join the app because of Steamboat Willie. But the people already on the app are going to want gems, so they're going to sell, so the prices are going to fall. But the people that join the app are then going to want to buy up everything else that's IP related and then the price is going to go up. So you just need to kind of recognize that and you can make a lot of money really playing around it. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. What, what, what do you think? Um, so we we concluded, I think, right, that Steamboat Willie is not going to be the FA Mickey. So FA Mickey is part of statue. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I was happy to see that. Because, <laughs> we both, we both yeah. Because I was like, this has to be the FA Mickey. But yeah. I was like, you know, they could they could they could maybe say, oh, guess what? It's a statue, like a partner statue that happens to have Mickey within it, but this is FA Steamboat Mickey or like some kind of weird terminology. So man, I was I was very relieved. And to me, that was like like I slept really well last night after <laughs> my, <laughs> my thought process in that chat was. If this was under the Steamboat Willie collection, then yeah, it would make sense. It's under right his character, but this is under the Mickey Mouse collection, so it makes sense that these are first editions compared to a first appearance. You know, because if it was focused entirely on one character, that makes that makes sense. But if they give an FA to a character in a Mickey Mouse collection, the title Mickey Mouse collection, that's going to confuse a lot of people. So that basically solidifies my my theory on how they want to make that Walt statue incredibly valuable. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's interesting too, like that's that's two FAs in one NFT. You know, which is like I think that's the first time like we've ever even seen that on BB. That and like what Homer Simpson too with Bart, but yeah. like I've never seen that done before. Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, I think you know, and this is the other thing that goes back to what we were saying is like you know that it's going to stand the test of time just for that reason alone right and it's like their first and the other thing people forgetting like this is the first ever disney drop ever like this isn't like the 15th drop that happens to have mickey and walt like this is the first one it's got two of the most iconic figures it's pretty limited compared to a lot of other nfts i mean i just don't see how this is not going to do well and people love gold and you know what's funny? I don't know if, if you guys think this, but I find when there's animations in the NFTs, it almost cheapens the NFT to me, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, like when I see Secret or Spider-Man, no offense to, to developers, but doing like the thing hanging upside down, doing a backflip. I'm like in the future, I feel like that's going to look so amateur compared to some of the technology that maybe you'll give it a classic vibe, but I'm like, I almost just wish it was static personally. Mm. I don't know how you guys feel about that. It, you know what's interesting about that is I've always felt, and I've never actually said this out loud, but I've always felt that Seeger or Spider-Man statue is unfinished. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like the animation is not complete? I feel like there's going to there's going to be a, some changes to that. I feel personally. I mean, just did, did do you feel that way? Do you see that? As well, well? My so much? Is like I, I, well, I always thought with an NFT, right, that once it's done, it's done, done. It can never be changed again. So I'm curious as to how like they continue to make modifications. Because wouldn't that take away from it being like an actual NFT? Like, I don't know how that process would work. I, th I think as long as it stays within the VB ecosystem, they have full control over the NFT. I see. So yeah. the second that it starts, it leaves and goes to like, you know, OpenSea and, and different marketplaces, they lose control and they can't, there's nothing they can do. But that's why I also think that it's very possible that Disney and Marvel, I don't think these NFTs are going to leave VB. I think it's very possible. And if that does happen, um, in my opinion, at least, that means that they're, all in on the VB-verse. They're all in on this metaverse because they want to create the go-to metaverse with all these big brands. Right. Um, but we'll see. It's, it's yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense with the interoperability. And my God, could you imagine if we can actually take these offline? Like you can take your Secret or Spider-Man in cold storage and it would just never be available again. Like imagine you lose 400 Secret Rare Spider-Mans like in the future and it's all these little digital ID things and locked up in these little <laughs> old wallets. Like, yeah. I mean, damn, bro. Like this is, if, if that actually happens, I mean, those things in my opinion be worth like millions of dollars. I, I, I really think that. So I don't know. I almost think all the commons should be animated just because yeah. people, I think the general public would, us as collectors, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think it does cheapen it, but I think the general public that kind of don't really think long-term collectible i just think they 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 like the fun oh he, you know at christmas like here's here's my comment i just got and you know they want to show everyone the animation they can, they've got something to show which is pretty cool so i almost think it's better for it would be better for the app and better for the whole entire space if the common the cheapest version would have the animation in my opinion right it's good for market value yeah it does make sense yeah i like that a lot Talking about that, I know that Lewis, you just gave away like five, another five collectibles in your uh, Discord the other day. I mean, geez, man, this is awesome. uh, this is bumping. I feel like you're giving more collectibles away than Vivi is. <laughs> <laughs> I have no money there. 
the odds, the odds, in, the odds in our Discord at the moment are like uh, I don't know, one in forty-five, which is which is great odds, really. Because if you compare it to the to the, um, to the BB space, I mean, even when you look at a comic drop, if they drop like sixty thousand comics and there's like one point three million active users, probably like what I don't know, a million or, or nine hundred thousand people. That's that's a, a lot worse odds than what I'm giving out, and I'm giving it for free as well. So. Um, I mean, I, I set the Discord up, especially with Danny. I mean, we just wanted to to bring some free information to everyone. I know there's a lot of guys out there that don't really have friends at the moment that are even on VV and they want to speak to people on a daily basis. I know we've got a group chat. You've probably got many group chats, of course. And uh, I think it's good for, for people within the community to share ideas. So I'll just set the Discord up and, you know, it's free. Um, and I just thought to get more people in and try and get people involved. I'll just do some giveaways of, of a, a good NFT drop that's on the day. So we did, what did we do? Deadpool. We did uh, a couple more before that too. So, you know, Wonder I'm trying Wonder to get that five. Woman. What was that, mate? Wonder Woman first we did, didn't we? We did, um, yeah, gave away Wonder Woman and then uh, five uh, FA Steve, um, what was it? Captain America, sorry. Um, yeah. F, that was, it was, it's been going well though, hasn't it? It's, 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 uh, it's a lot of good, lot, lot of good guys in there. Yeah, and I was doing it just for free on Twitter and stuff. And, uh, you know, but I wanted to just bring some people into the Discord too. And I will continue to do them on, on Twitter. And I would like to give them to people that have never even joined VV. You know, if I can put out something on Twitter and someone joins that has never had an NFT in their life and I can just give them one and then they can just put it into my arm, put it on the floor and look at it on their phone, then I know for sure that they are hooked. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, That's awesome. And I know their next step is to go to their girlfriend or if they're a girl go to their boyfriend and take their phone and sign up for a second account and <laughs> you too. So oh, that's yeah. great, man. And it's I I mean I'm in there too and it's it's amazing how fast these giveaways happen as well. Like I remember all of a sudden you're like, okay, yeah, we're giving away five Deadpools within like three hours. <laughs> they're they're giving out, right? Like usually people are like, okay, on December 28th. In exactly 11 days from now, I'll be giving away one common Marvel comic, right? It's like, you know, <laughs> this is a different level of operation here. But, you know, Sean, you've been doing some crazy giveaways too. I know recently you're giving away, if I'm not wrong, like a high graded copy of Deadpool, right? Of the first appearance of Deadpool. There it is. There it's it is. Awesome, yeah. Man. Wow. So we're going to be, we're going to be giving away a physical copy of Deadpool with a low mint common uh, oh. on Christmas day. Love that. And we're gonna ship this. We're gonna ship this worldwide to anyone whoever wins. So, so everyone's involved. Wow! And you can just yeah. get it. Like, where can you find that information, Sean? Is that on your uh, Twitter and all that stuff? Yeah, it's on, it's on our link tree. It's the very top okay. link on our link tree. Um, but also, it's it's the it's pinned to our Twitter account. Um, it's also on our Instagram and Facebook. If you're on the Everywhere. Facebook VV Collectibles page, I posted that. It's a <laughs> No, that's good, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think I saw like a yeah. Coleman retweeted it too, so that's perfect, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's awesome. the thing, right? A lot of people are just presuming that um, you know, VV's like, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, it's it's obviously the number one source for for reliable information, but there's a lot of good communities that are happening simultaneously. And um, I personally think the number one way to learn and to be really skilled at VV is to be involved in these discords and other channels, not just to be watching like YouTube. Because when you watch YouTube, you're already like 24 hours too late. I always say that. Yeah. <laughs> but the next day after something's pumped and you sold it off, you're like, okay, so... You know, so I think it's important to be kind of on the ground development. So yeah, so definitely check that stuff out. Um, so I guess I got one final question um, for everybody. Um, and this is where on the current app right now, which NFT do you think will be worth the most in let's say three to five years from now? If you had to pick out of the current NFTs that we have. Should we say excluding Walt statue? I was just about to say that. Yeah. Okay, exclude, yeah, if everyone says Walt, okay. then yeah, okay, excluding yeah, Walt. Yeah, excluding the partners, yeah. <laughs> okay. What about, is it inclu including comics? Yeah, including comics as well. Yeah, yeah. okay. Hmm. Right. Maybe I'll start with Sean, because I'm assuming well. it's Marvel 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's my, that would be my go-to for sure. Uh, that would be Spider-Man Sticker statue. But I'm going to go with the Dark Horse here and say Givenchy Pride. I think there's a lot of potential there. And I know we've, we've had conversations about this as well. I, I think, I feel pretty confident it's going to go be, they're gonna be able to sell it on Evil X and OpenSea. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity with that collectible for sure. And I think it's just one big sale away from, from just mooning, uh, not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, you got, um, what did you get? You got the number 52, right? Which was 
this obviously the sub 100 which we saw on the market but obviously 52 is 1952 was the year mm. that Blanche was was formed so I think that could yeah. be incredible that could be huge, yeah. uh, that's awesome yeah that could be like that thing should be in a museum you know like one day mm, yeah it will be because not only have you got that that specific mint number you're also in that sub 100 category as well so it hits all that criteria well that would well, that would be definitely cool for sure but I mean, for me, I'm going to go with, yeah, I'm going to go with Marvel Comics 1 just because uh, of the physical value. I mean, I don't have anything else yeah. to peg, peg any value to that, that's cl even close to that. So I, I would have to go with the Marvel comic. Right. Yeah, I'd probably say the same Marvel comic too, but I was also thinking, Chad, you know how they used to collect, what was it, the first 18 back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know there is some guys out there with 15. low, low mints, like 20s and stuff like that, like Rizzo, number wow. 20. Yeah. So I think those, like those are numbers you can't even get, you know. So I think stuff that's like Wait, extremely. There's actually, like there's actually Rizzo twenties out there. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's seventeens yeah. out there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. yeah sub sub forties. So Lewis, if you see one of those, snatch that up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Well, we saw we we, we wow. actually saw some stuff on the we saw what a thirty eight um Becky did we Danny we saw two yeah, didn't yeah, we yeah. thirty eight yeah. Beckys and and I think a thirty five. No. 35 Rizzo, wouldn't there? For yeah, 35 Rizzo too. Yeah, there's some there. 55k as well. So that, now looking back, it's like probably not a bad deal. Um, yeah. it pops back up again. And we'll, yeah, we'll, I, we'll, we'll I'd say there's only like 20 people <laughs> that have those. Yeah, that's like super exclusive. I mean, to me, I like you say, obviously, if we're just going oh. off floor price, what are we doing floor prices or just like general, what will be the most expensive? NFT? Yeah, maybe even like, yeah, like even like I know adding the mints in there would probably. You know, kind of be fun. Um, like I always think, like 1939 Batman. If you're gonna go like Todd McFarlane, could be crazy. Yeah. But, mm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Exactly. Though, the sub 40s, like that was a thing back in our day, right? So when we came in, like you would see them in the market a lot. Like you'd see us like a 24 Marcelin, but it would be like astronomical back then. Astronomical was like 5k. You'd be like, oh, yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> so what, what uh, is, um, I was going to say, yeah. Um, obviously, we've got sub sub one hundred Todds and that. I mean, Todd, where it's the first the VNFT to me, it's like I think it is my favorite, other than obviously the partner statue where I've got a, um, a low mint one of that, and obviously the story behind that is what makes me enjoy that one so much. But um, the, the the Todd, I think, is by far the best looking out of all of the NFTs to me, anyway. Um, which is what I was going to say to you, Sean. Did I did I fuck up and buy? What does this mean? The third no. printing. What does third printing mean? Have I fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> I You've got a shit one. It's worth nothing. <laughs> is, it, is, it worth, is it worth nothing? It's no. It's worth something. It's worth something for sure. Um, it's just not worth, worth as much as. This. <laughs> I'm, I'll, 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 I'll get back to you once I I'll do a little assessment. I'm not really. I don't really know too much about the third and the second printing. Um, but uh, I'll, what does that mean? No, you did fine. What was so, the... Yeah, so for print runs for comic books, you have a first printing, and then when that's complete and the demand is still there, they'll do a second printing, and they'll do a third printing. Um, that's all, that only started, in the, I think, in the 80s. That's very recent. So that's why the older comics, they did one print run, and that was it. Um, Fantastic Four number one, they have something called the Golden Reprint, and that's in like 1966, I think. And they did um, a, an X amount of, of reprints of the first issue because of popularity. But outside of that, it's not very common that there are reprints from books from the 60s and 70s is it so is this the same year then so this is where it's the third reprint it says third print oh, i didn't see this when i when i saw it obviously chad said i bought this like nine points i was like well i didn't even know that was it, that it existed i was like i have to get one obviously yeah um, yeah where it's obviously the, the first appearance of todd and, and I'm, I'm started collecting um obviously the physical stuff as well i ordered the todd statue which turned out for you yeah but it was a Mandalorian when it turned up. So I don't know what I ended up with a Mando <laughs> statue. No, I, I, I had to pay like 60 quid import duty. And then it turned up and I was like, oh, well, I've got the wrong statue. So that's brilliant. Uh, um, it'll match your, uh, your, your Mando statue when it comes to, to Vivi. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've actually sent it back this morning in the hopes that the guy will send it. Me. Yeah. So we'll see. Is it off eBay? Uh, no, it was well. I tried getting off eBay, but Lewis bought the last one, so I had to. Um, <laughs> I had to you message the guy Lewis. direct and say, "Look, have you got any more?" Because um, I sent it to Lewis and I said, "Oh, look at this." And I said, "I'm messaging the guy," and he he bought it. So I was like, oh, "Okay, well, I have the message." <laughs> and he said, "I've got one on the store." 
Um, so yeah, it was the first edition, last one they had. But yeah, obviously it, it, it turned up and it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. So he's 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 sent it to a guy in Spain apparently. So I'm waiting for the guy to Spain to send it to me so I can oh, send no. the Mandalorian away. Yeah, it's a shit show. Really. Uh, there you go. Mine came in a macaroni box. <laughs> yeah, <it did. laughs> the mom was from Italy, and then so my girlfriend texted me. She was like, "What's his macaroni box you've ordered?" I said, oh, "I ain't ordered no macaroni box." I said, "Open it." She opened it, and it was uh, it was the Todd. But obviously, when she's having the picture, I was like, "What the hell is that?" Some some weirdo <laughs> semi. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah. But what do you? How do you feel, Sean? How do you feel about? The VV community leak uh, and leaking over into actually actual physical collectibles because I'm sure just like we have, we want to potentially try and match mints to physical collectibles or you know go yeah. out now and buy the real one so it's not always an AR we can just see it in front of us. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, man. I, I I'm really surprised and excited about how many people are collecting the physical comic books now. I mean, people are hitting me up just as much about di- physical comic books and digital. And I've actually been screenshotting all the posts that I've seen. So here's my phys- my comic book that just came in. I can match my statue. I can match my my digital comic book now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, this space, man, it's just getting bigger. It's not going in one direction or the other. It's exciting. It's really exciting. And I really hope that these uh, that a lot of the comic book sto- shops um, adapt adapt to the space because it's, there's a lot of opportunity here. If they can figure out ways to bridge that world, man, it's going to be huge for them. Huge. So yeah, it's 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 getting big. It's getting really really big. Is your, that's what I'm trying to do too. Right. Yeah, trying to help bridge that that those two worlds together, like this contest that I'm doing, that we're doing. Uh, so do you, do you so you do you do you have a, a business in real life that sells comics and stuff? Uh, do I have do you have a, do, do you own a business that sells comics? Oh no, 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 no. I just um I'm just a, a, a private collector. Oh and, right, okay. Right. I just, I, yeah, but there's there's like Instagram uh, escrow services that I use. Um, eBay is a big one, or just just comic shops online, but um, but I know a lot of a lot of people who have shops or have online stores that I, I work with or yeah I talk to a lot about <laughs> the mindset. A lot of the stuff that I come up with I actually cross reference with real life collectors. I'm like hey guys like physical physical comic collectors have been doing it for 20 30 years. And I'm like guys what do you think of my rankings? What do you think of this? And they're very much in sync with with my belief. And they all sometimes they all three of them or four of them have different philosophies, but they're always they look at the stuff that I I give, I give them. And they're like, yeah, this is spot on. I, I agree with these rankings. You know, it changed maybe this or this here, but yeah, overall, I think it's great. So, yeah, yeah. especially like the the mint, the CGC grading scale to mint numbers, and that's something that they're really, really intrigued about. Which is, I'm just trying to show examples to, especially bring them into this space. And that's that's a good reference for them. Really, really good reference. And and actually, it's really cool too because I I know David, you just talked about how the last minted collectible is going to be, in his opinion, are going to be incredibly valuable. And we've had that mindset for a long, long time. That's that's why on our list, if you look at the very, very bottom, it says 99.9%. Because we've always felt that the last mint, minted number was going to be incredibly valuable, at least the last few as well. So, yeah, lots of opportunity. Lots of opportunity. That's crazy. Oh, sure. Man, I, uh, I was going to touch on what you're saying there, Sean, because I know you had a thousand editions. Because this is why I thought you owned your own shop, because you showed me literally a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> one comic book. I was like, what kind of regular dude is out there playing a thousand? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was for a, 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 a comic called House of Slaughter, which is a spin-off of a, a comic called Something is Killing the Children. And there's a show coming to Netflix based off, off that series. It's from Boom, which uh, also did a comic book called Berserker, which is created by Keanu Reeves. And it's also Boom is a big comic book uh, label that actually did a big contract with Netflix. So they have now they have um, they have access to all their IP, all their comic books. So all the stories that they come up with are now probably going to end up on Netflix. So yeah, and that's and that's what's t- how comic books are really tied to uh, like shows and films. That's why a lot of the comic books right now that are valuable and they continue to increase over time are tied really to the MCU and the popularity of these characters. That's why, like for example, like Amazing Fantasy 15 is the highest selling book of all time. Recently, I think it was a couple months ago, it sold for $3.6 million as a 9.6. There's only three in existence. And I, I still think that's incredibly undervalued. I mean, you look at some of these NFTs that are selling weekly, man. It's like, it's $3.6 million. That's not really, that's, that's average, right? I mean, it's not that crazy just to think that these comic books could sell for 20 plus, 30 plus million dollars in the near future, especially with crypto, especially with crypto. Well, 
What's your guys' um what what are you looking forward to the most like IP wise for VB to kind of partner with? Who are you looking like just Pokemon? Yeah. Pokemon, baby. Let's go. Definitely, definitely, definitely Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, well, two reasons. One, I, I don't really know much about Pokemon. And Chad and Randy, you know, Randy Chavez, big shout out to Randy. They know so much about Pokemon. And I'm just excited to like be the just come back and just learn from, from these guys now. Like, I'm so excited about that. For on uh, we're on IP and uh, Pokemon, man, that's a big world, <laughs> and also it's going to bring so much awareness to the platform as well. So that's that's what I'm definitely pumped about that for sure. And I think uh, I think I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty optimistic about that one. <laughs> well, the thing is too, Pokemon <laughs> is going to target the perfect audience. Like the the, the guys yeah. that are in there are from like 20 to let's say 35, 40 years old. They grew up with Pokemon, yeah. and that was like the, their nostalgia as a kid. So I think it's they're going to hit the main audience. And like stuff like a Charizard, like the the cards, uh, like a Shadowless Charizard, first edition in real life, selling for like one hundred and fifty thousand. You know, so these these collectibles are gonna go up like crazy. How do you think it's gonna be shown, Carson? Do you think it's gonna be shown as a card or as the physical or both? No, yeah, I think physical guarantee. What? I don't think they'll show cards, but if they do show, like I, I think that would actually kind of ruin it. To be honest, if they showed the cards, mm. I'd rather it be like a physical Charizard. And he'll probably, knowing the secret rare, he'll probably, like, blow flames or something like that. Yeah, yeah, just like, oh, yeah. You don't, think, you, don't, you don't think cards will come to the app? Cards? I don't think the Pokemon, I don't think it'll be cards. I think it's going to be, like, the actual, like, collectible. Like, almost as if you're playing, like, like the DS and you're playing the Pokemon game, you know? And, like, oh, who knows, cool. maybe they come wow. out of a, a Pokemon ball or something like that. Oh, man. I mean, that would be insane. You have to have physical ca- cards to play actual, and then you have air glasses on. You're actually ba- playing real that, Pokemon. That would be Pokemon. crazy, to be honest. Yeah. That's insane. That's like, I mean, that's very possible, right? That'd be fun. Holy uh, shit. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. I hope that if you imagine the, the packs, obviously, like they released the first edition base set um, as they did in real life. And then imagine if they just repeated the, the, in chronological order what they released, and you just buy a pack off the store and you'd get the same sort of chances you get. To get um obviously the the the, the Charizard or the Blastoise or anything like that, and they gave you the cards in NFT form, and then you played the game in the app. You know the the the, the, the opportunity. Uh, what you what you could do with it is limitless, isn't it? Which is why obviously we're also bullish on on what they could do. Um, when you sort of thinking about these things, it starts getting ridiculous. You can think, well, David, you're so massive into the cards where he's been from the beginning. Obviously, selling them in his shops and stuff. He must be thinking about that. He has to be thinking what can we do you know what what's what's, what's going to get the most amount of hype and what what's going to make this go viral or go or go completely insane it's and to me i think obviously they will do the digital collection. i'd probably think that they probably won't do the, the packs as well but if they did yeah. imagine how amazing that would be and how big it would get if they just re- released each pack in chronological order you know yeah, yeah. honestly that's a good it's- point because even with comics like they released the marvel comics they might release packs and if they do like Shadowless first set first edition and you pull a Charizard or something, yeah, it's too oh, easy, man. isn't it? Isn't it too easy? It's just like be printing money, but like, again, they just be like, Well, yeah. uh, we've got the license, we know it works, <laughs> it's tried and tested. Let's just rehash this shit, and it, it's, it's game over again. And it's, it just starts yeah. out again, true. Yeah, I hope they think of before they do it. I hope they don't definitely just don't rush into it. I'd rather they be smart with it first ever time because realistically, whoever does it first has, has won, but I mean. I hope they do think about the way they do it because I would rather it be really hard, you know, and really, I don't know. I think, yeah, I just want it to be really hard to get a Charizard. Do you know what I mean? I want it to be as hard as possible. Yeah. I want it to be as rare as possible. Um, <laughs> you know when they bring it up with like too many or too easy? And I hope yeah, it's Lewis not wants that, But none of us want it because we're not, we're not going to get it. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, no. I, I, hope the, I hope the Charizard is not the common. Yeah. yeah, the Charizard no, needs no, no, to be no, no, no. It needs to be the most expensive yeah. because it already is in real life. And if they do it as the common, yeah. it will ruin it. I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I said to him, I said before you buy every single one, let me get one before you buy all the rest. <laughs> yeah. Let me buy one first. And I said, <laughs> I'm, you just imagine. He said, yeah, I'm, when it comes out, I'm buying every single one that they've got. I'm like, well, no, let's just leave some for some of us. <laughs> I actually think I think when I think that will overtake the partner statue for sure I think yeah, that will yeah. uh, that will be the most expensive one on the app I don't see anything beating that in my personal opinion yeah yeah and you know it's the same mints as that 
Sorry, yeah, ex exactly. If we have, imagine fewer, right? And mm. that's what we we're yeah. saying too. I think, <laughs> Akars, did your phone die? Are you still here, bro? No, sorry. Just okay. I was like, I <laughs> saw it. Not bad. <laughs> sorry. One, give me one second. Give me one second. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, man, I mean, I think, you know, the biggest thing we noticed from Pokemon collecting was that some stuff is going to be worthless, like not worthless, but little to no money. Right. And like, that's what I think people need to understand about VV. Sean, you see the same thing in, 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 in comics, man. Like you go to a comic book store, here's your $2 bins and there's thousands of $2 bins. And it's like, you know, and that's what we think. And that's like the same logic goes into the collecting world now is like, if this is a big, significant first appearance or really rare, uh, item then it should be worth a lot long term but i just think that's important for people to to recognize right yeah definitely yeah you think where if like you say like uh, lewis said you wouldn't want to devalue something that obviously is so sought after and because charizard is i mean it's not necessarily the rarest card is it it's, it's just like first edition base set charizard isn't that rare in terms of uh what do they call it uh, the grading who, who, who grades who grades the Pokemon? PSA. PSA. Yeah. PSA. In terms of PSA, it's not. If you look on their index, it's not the rarest card, but obviously it's that sentimental. So, I don't. It'd be interesting to see how they do it. I hope they don't like you say ruin it by making it a common. What if they bring out? What if they have? What if they partner with BGS? I think BGS is one and PSA. Yeah. You could either get a BGS or a PSA ten, yeah. or some, you know what I mean. Imagine they did a little bit of both. I don't know. There's endless possibilities. I just hope they do it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's in safe hands with David Yu and 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 the, and the guys. You know, they they like David. Like Chad obviously interviewed him the yeah. other day, and the, the guy's like a proper collector. You know. He knows yeah, what, yeah, you know. definitely. Did you hear what he said? I, I just, yeah. He literally was like, "I have a couple of floors of collectibles," and he shifted his camera up, and it was like three floors of like stacked, and he's like, "And a few <laughs> warehouses." A few warehouses. Oh, he actually, he does have warehouses. Yeah, warehouses, like with an S. Like, I'm pretty sure that he says that. And I was like, okay, this guy is like, and then he had a $4,000 Charmander, white Charmander sitting on his desk, which, uh, and, and so this guy is like, like Danny said, he's proper, like, like this is his lifestyle, you know? And, and he's sharing it with the world, man. It's just insane. Uh, yeah. That's the one thing I will say about Vivi, man. They'll, they, execute on quality you know they, they won't push things out if it's not ready and that's and i appreciate that so much into this community <laughs> in the end it's going to work out really well really really well yeah well guys thank thanks so much for coming on man like this has been a lot of fun it was cool to be able to just like have a natural conversation with all of you guys i mean you know i think carson and i starting in our basement on this little computer with like crappy audio i still have crappy audio but i mean it was so much worse then <laughs> And, you know, to be sitting here with like the three of you guys, man, um, you know, it's just amazing. And I mean, it, it's just so cool to see how this space is developing. And I'm just like honored to, you know, be able to kind of be here with you guys. And uh, thanks for coming on, man. So hopefully we can do this again. Um, Danny, we need to see your face more out there, man, because you yeah. have a lot of skills people need to learn. So absolutely. I appreciate you having me on, man. That's been good. Thank you. Hey, hey Chad, before we go, can I can I give a quick shout out to a project? Um, there's a project called called the thing to donnie and these guys are incredible so these australian guys started a project where they're going they bought a, a thing like in the mighties for four gems and they're working on flipping it all the way up to a donnie and when they reach a donnie they're going to sell it and donate all the money to charity they're wow. an awesome group of guys it's a really cool project wow. um, you can follow them at the thing at the thing to donnie at the thing to Donnie. <laughs> on Twitter, right? That's uh, on Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So make sure to follow their journey. They just passed over 1,100 gems in their portfolio. So great group of guys. Really cool project. So make sure to follow them on there. Yeah. We should just follow whatever they're buying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll start off with four gems. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Well, well, thanks again, guys. And uh, yeah, like I said, you know, I'll be, this will be live in a little bit. So, and uh, yeah, well, I'll see you guys soon. So thanks so much for coming on. Okay. Thanks. Nice one. Thanks. Thanks. So much fun, guys. Thank nice to meet you all. Bye.